Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see. Got to get my flowers positioned correctly. How are you today? It's Friday. We made it to the end of another week. I can't see my flowers over here. It might be too high. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, May 19th, 2023. It is 9.02 a.m. And let me give you the weather here. 59 degrees and partly sunny. Looks totally sunny right now. I pray it stays that way. But anyway, good morning, everyone. Happy to be back. The month is flying by. I feel like time is just getting away from me as usual. But life is good, right? We're, we're um, happy. I'm happy to be in the land of the living. Let me say that. And we made it through another week. So welcome. Today, what are we doing, Allison? Today we are finishing up Matthew chapter 26. And I'm going to finish it up in the Amplified Translation. We are moving right along, ladies and gentlemen. So... <clears throat> Matthew chapter 26, the second half. What do we see in this chapter? This is, um, I told you this yesterday that this chapter was 75 verses. This is a pretty long chapter. So today we're going to be reading about, um, good morning. Good morning, Gigi. This morning we're going to be reading about the, the Lord's Supper or communion, the Last Supper. Um, we're going to be reading about Jesus' Jesus's betrayal. How Judas betrays him and Peter denies him three times. So we have a lot of ground to cover this morning. All right. So we're going to pray and get into it because um, we still have a lot. We have to get through 26 through 75. All right. So I'm not going to chit chat too much longer. And I'm going to pray and then we're going to get into the reading of the word and see what God reveals to each and every one of us. How are you feeling this morning, Gigi? I hope you're doing good. All right, so let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much for waking us up this morning, God. We thank you for the gift of today. We thank you for another chance at life, God. I thank you. It is a pleasure to wake up and be in the land of the living. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that is on here with me live. I thank you for my cousin Gigi's life. God, I thank you for each and every other person that will join those that are with me live and those that will watch the replay. Father, I ask that you continue to watch over each and every one of us, watch over us and everyone in our households and our bloodlines, maternal and paternal, the oldest to the youngest, God. I pray that you will keep a hedge of protection around us that cannot be broken, penetrated, nor compromised. Keep us safe from all forms of hurt, harm, and destruction. Lord, I ask that you will order our steps, direct our paths, that we will always be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Lord, I ask that you will release favor upon our lives. Bless the works of our hands. Father, I ask for a fresh download today of wisdom for your word. It says that he who lacks wisdom, let him ask and you will supply it liberally. So Lord, I ask this morning that you give each and every one of us a fresh download of wisdom, <clears throat> excuse me, that we will have the knowledge, the revelation, the talent, the skill, the insight that we need to conduct our business and to do your will. Lord, I pray that you will put us on the path that you have set before us. Bring anything that is out of alignment in our lives back into divine alignment. Father, if there's anything out of divine alignment in our bodies, I ask this morning that you bring our bodies back into divine alignment, that we may be healthy and we may be whole from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Lord, I pray that you will bless the works of our hands, cause everything that we put forth our time, our energy and talent to do. God, that's according to your will. Lord, I pray that it will be successful and prosperous. Oh Lord, I pray that every need is met in our lives. Oh Lord, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that lack is not our portion. Poverty is not our portion, but wealth is our portion. Prosperity is our portion. Healing is our portion. Joy is our portion. 
Mercy is our portion. Grace is our portion. Peace is our portion. Father, I ask for safe traveling mercies today as we go out about our business, O Lord, and the children go to school. Keep us all safe from all forms of accidents. God, see Keep us safe from all forms of hurt, harm, and destruction. Let us return home safely at the appointed hour. And God, as I prepare to read your word, I say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Flow how you want to flow. Use me how you want to use me, oh God. I pray that the reading of your word this morning will be able to go forth without any distra distractions, disturbances, or hindrances. Lord, I pray for the connection that the connection connection will remain stable and will not drop this morning that we can enjoy the reading of your word and glean from it what it is that we need for our lives today in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen and amen all right so here we're going to pick up at verse 26 this morning the Lord's Supper instituted and it reads, now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood, the new and better covenant, which ratifies the agreement and is being poured out for many as a substitutionary atonement for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Verse 31, then Jesus said to them, you will fall away because of me this night, delusioned about me, confused, and some even ashamed of me. For it is written in the scriptures, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised to life, I will go ahead of you leading the way to Galilee. Peter replied to him, though they all fall away because of you and doubt and disown you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, I assure you and solemnly say to you this night before a rooster crows, you will completely deny me three times. Peter said to Jesus, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same thing. They were very confident and sure of themselves. The Garden of Gethsemane, verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, Olive Press. And he told his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, he began to be grieved and greatly distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow. Stay here and stay awake and keep watch with me. After going a little further, he fell on his face. He fell face down, rather, I'm sorry, and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, that is consistent with your will, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you mean you could not stay awake and keep watch with me for one hour Keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed saying, my father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. This is the second time. So leaving them again for the third time, he went away and prayed for the third time saying the same words once more. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Listen, the hour of my sacrifice is at hand and the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners whose way and nature is to oppose God. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayal is near. Jesus' betrayal and arrest, verse 47 as Jesus was still speaking, Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, came up accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who came as representatives from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now, the betrayer had given them a sign saying, whomever I kiss, he is the one, 
sees him. Immediately, Judas went to Jesus and said, greetings, rejoice, rabbi. And he kissed him in a deliberate act of betrayal. Jesus said to Judas, friend, do what you came for. Then they came and seized Jesus and arrested him. And one of those who were with Jesus reached out and drew his sword and struck Malchus, the slave of the high priest, and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back in its place, for all those who habitually draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot appeal to my father and he will immediately provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? How then will the scriptures be fulfilled? that it must happen this way. 55. At that moment, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as you would against a robber? Day after day, I used to sit in the porches and courts of the temples teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scripture of the prophets would be fulfilled. Then all the disciples desert, deserted him and fled. That's verse 56. Everybody was out of there. Jesus before Caiaphas. Those who had seized, here we go, verse 57 again. Those who had seized Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court, had gathered illegally together. But Peter followed him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the elegant home of the Jewish high, Jewish high priest and went inside and sat with the guards to see the outcome. Verse 59, now the chief priests and the whole council, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court, tried to get false witnesses to testify against Jesus so that they might have a reason to put him to death. They found none, even though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and testified. This man said, I am able to tear down the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, have you no answer to give? What is this that these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. He didn't say a word. And the high priest said to him, I call on you. I call on you to swear a binding oath by the living God that you tell us whether you are the Christ, the son of God. Jesus said to him, you have in fact said it. But more than that, I tell you, regardless of what you do to me now, in the future, you will see me revealed as the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Verse 65, then the high priest tore his robes in mock horror and exclaimed, he has blasphemed by making himself God's equal. What further need have we of witnesses or evidence? See, you have now heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They answered. He deserves to be put to death. Then they spat in his face and struck him with their fists and some slapped him saying, prophesy to us, you Christ, Messiah anointed. Who was it that struck you? Peter's denial, verse 69. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard and a servant girl came up to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all saying, I do not know what you're talking about. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Second time. And again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. Verse 73, after a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, surely you are one of them too, for even your Galilean accent gives you away. Verse 74, then he began to curse, that is to invoke God's judgment on himself and swear an oath. I do not know the man. And at that moment, the rooster crowed and Peter remembered the prophetic words of Jesus. When he had said, before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly in repentance. Amen and amen. And that concludes Matthew chapter 26. So we have a lot, um, a lot that took place in this chapter. Okay. 
So what do I have in my notes this morning? I started with the first section here. We see Jesus having um, the Last Supper, and now we take communion in church, right, in, rem in remembrance of this. Take, eat, this is my body. Um, and he gives them the cup. Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new and better covenant, which ratifies the agreement and is being poured out for many as a substitutionary atonement for the forgiveness of our of sins. I'm saying for our sins, right? Okay. Now, the other thing I wrote down in my notes here is verse 31. Then Jesus said to them, you will fall away because of me this night. For it is written in the scriptures, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. I come after the leader, just what we happened, right? I come after, they came after Jesus and what happened? All of the disciples fled. The sheep, the flock, they scattered. They just left, right? And then Peter denies him. But after raised to life, I will get, go ahead of you um, leading the way to Galilee. You know, and I was just sitting here as I was um, reading this about the flock being scattered, right? I was just thinking about, so here it is in, in 33, Peter replied to him, though they all fall away because of you and doubt and disown you, I will never fall away. And I'm just thinking about, you know, in the end times, people um, taking the mark of the beast just totally falling away. Right? That's what came, that's what came through my mind as I was reading that. I was thinking how many people will take the mark of the beast and just completely, you know, fall away. Okay. But you 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 love this, right? This is the humanness of of um and the I don't know how to put this accurately. But all the disciples, they were so sure that they were not going to fall away. Right? It says here in verse 35, Peter said to Jesus, even if I have to die with you, like I will lay down my life for you, Jesus. I will not deny you. There's no turning back for me, right? I'm all in. And it says all the disciples said the same thing. Everybody was very confident and very sure of themselves and then their position that they were going to stand by Jesus. And the next, what happens? Everybody flees, right? Oh, okay. Verse 37. So now Jesus goes into the garden of Gethsemane and he has Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which are John and James. And he tells them, my soul is deeply grieved, grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow. Stay awake, stay, keep watch with me right? So Jesus goes off and prays and he comes back and they were asleep. And he says here in verse 40, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so you mean you could, you men could not stay awake and keep watch with me for one hour, one single hour, right? Out of all the there's this 24 hours in the day. I bring you away to come with me and you can't stay awake for one hour. You're already sleeping. And then it says here in verse 41, keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Now that's so true, right? How many times do we feel very strong, just like they thought. I would never turn my back on you, Jesus. I'm with you till the end. Nothing, 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 nothing could make me deny you. And then they all leave, right? But it says, keep actively watching and praying. Keep your faith up. Keep your spirit high, right? <clears throat> Pray without ceasing, I'm going to say. That you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing. We have a desire in our hearts and in our minds to do certain things. But the flesh is weak, right? And we fall into temptation to our flesh a lot of times. Just take a natural example. I'm going to diet. I'm going to fast. But now my flesh is weak. I see food. I smell food. You know how you can smell French fries. You smell popcorn. You smell different things. And just the aroma tempts you. And next thing you know, you've fallen off. You've cheated on your fast. 
You didn't intend to cheat on your fast. Your mind, you really wanted to fast. You have a desire to fast. You have a heart to fast. Your spirit is willing, but the flesh, the body becomes weak. And so we have to gird ourselves up. Like we have to be so strong that in our, in our faith, our commitment, our dedication has to be so strong that we can overcome the body, the flesh. You know, we have to cause our flesh to die, die to the temptation. Don't give in so easily. So now he goes away here in verse 42. He goes away a second time to pray, saying, my father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. You know, ultimately, not my will, your will be done, God. And I pray that constantly, Lord, not my will, but your will be done in my life. I'm going to mess it up in my flesh. In the natural, I'm going to mess it up. So I need your will to be done in my life, God, not what my flesh wants. Again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. So this is twice now they're sleeping. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words once more. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting three times? They fell asleep on the job. They could not watch and pray with him. Listen, the hour of my sacrifice is at hand and the son of man is being betrayed trade into the hands of the sinners get up let's go look my betrayer judas is near all right so now we have the betrayal and the arrest of jesus starting in um starting here at verse 47 now judas who's one of the 12 disciples comes up and he says to them, whomever I kiss, he is the one sees him. Immediately, Judas went to Jesus and said, greetings, rabbi. And he kissed him in a deliberate, I love how it says here in the Amplify, in a deliberate act of betrayal. He had already planned it. It was premeditated, planned out. Jesus said to Judas, friend, he calls him friend, do what you came for. Then they came and seized Jesus and arrested him. That's verse 50. All right. I have here that I wanted to read verses 53 and 54 to you in the message. So let me flip over here. Okay, here in the message, it goes, it's um, grouped verses 52 through 54. Jesus said, put your sword back where it belongs. All right, Peter, let's, let me just back up for you. Let's just recap. All right, so he, he tells them to come do what you came for. And somebody pulls out the sword and cuts off the ear of Malchus. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back in its place because whoever habitually draws the sword will die by the sword. But here, here's the great part here in verse 53, right here, I'm still in the Amplify. He says, do you think I cannot appeal to my father and he will immediately provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? Right. I don't need you to pull out your sword and defend me. Do you think my father cannot defend me? Do you think I just I, I can't just call on my father and he will come to my rescue? But it says here in verse 54, how then will the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen this way? Right. Don't intervene. Don't interfere. Don't intervene in what's happening. The fulfillment of the scriptures is now taking place. Okay, here's the, the message. Jesus said, put your sword back where it belongs. All who use the swords are destroyed by the swords. Don't you realize that I am able right now to call my father and 12 companies more, if I want them, of fighting angels would be here, battle ready? But if I did that, how would the scriptures come true that say this is the way that it has to be? You love it, right? Don't you think my father has my back? Don't you think my father could come to, to my rescue? But that's not the way the scriptures have been written. This has to happen this way, right? So we must follow through on it. But I love it because in the natural, it's the same thing, right? When you're growing up, you know that you can call on your parents, you get in trouble. Do you think I can't call my daddy and my daddy in the natural my father, Alan Vaughn, would have come to my rescue immediate, if, immediately if I said, Daddy, help. If he caught, heard me crying for him, he would have been the, in the, He would have been to my rescue in an instant. Same thing with my mother. Same, things with, same thing with my sisters, right? 
but he could not. It had to happen that way. All right. What else do I have in my notes here? I love how Jesus called Judas friend, right? Okay. What else did I want to talk about later here? Oh, peace. Okay. So Peter, right? Peter, the man who says, I'll never, I'll, I'll give up my life for you, right? I'll never deny, I'll never deny you, Jesus. I am, it, even if they fall away, I'm not falling away, right? And what happens? Jesus told them, you will deny me three times. So now we see Peter, I'm, I'm here over in the message. Peter's sitting out in the courtyard and the servant girl comes up and says, you were with Jesus, the Galilean in front of everybody there. He denied it. I don't know what you're talking about. As he moved over toward the gate, someone else said, this is the man that was with Jesus, the Nazarene. Again, he denied it. Salting, it says here in the message, salting his denial with an oath, adding insult to injury is I guess the, the um, expression we use, right? I swear, I never laid eyes on the man. He's getting stronger and stronger in his denial, right? Shortly after that, some bystanders approached Peter. You've got to be one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he got really nervous, it says. He got really nervous and he swore, I don't know the man. So all of that, conviction he had about how he was going to stay the course and stay with Jesus went right out the window when he came under pressure. He couldn't, he couldn't, he didn't withstand it. And it's, it's interesting here how he became more and more forceful in his denial. Each time his denial became stronger and stronger. I don't know what you're talking about. We went from a simple, I don't know anything about, I don't know what you're talking about. A simple denial. <clears throat> Then he goes on to swearing. I swear I never laid eyes on this man. Then it goes, okay, let me go back over here to the Amplified. Because it says here in verse 74, now this is the third time. He, then he begins to curse. And then after now he's cursing. He sw it says he swore an oath. I do not know the man. And at that moment, the rooster crowed and Peter remembered the prophetic words of Jesus when he said, before rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly in repentance. Can you imagine the feeling of realizing what you just did? Of, you know, him realizing what he did? He had good intentions. I'm sure when he said, when he said, I was, I, I will never deny you. He meant it. I'm sure he meant it. He couldn't take the pressure when the time came. He caved. You know, each time he got stronger and stronger in his um, denial and more and more forceful in his denial. Sad thing, you know, I would never, I pray for all of us that we never fall away like that and deny Jesus and, and our faith, right? Right? Because we can't take the pressure. Because we can't take the persecution. Something to think about. But you know, I think out of this, um, when he says, you know, watch and pray. The spirit is, um, what verse is that? Watch and pray is around 41. He says, keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Let me just grab this in the um, King James. That is 40, 41. Let's see how the King James phrases it. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And let's look at the message and then we'll be done for today. This is 40 and 41. When he came back to his disciples, he found them sound asleep. He said to Peter, can't you stick it out with me one single hour? Stay alert. Be in prayer so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you're in danger. There is a part of you that is eager, 
that's ready for anything in God, but there's another part that's as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. And again, I'll just say this is true just in the natural, just when you want to read the Bible, just when you decide you want to pray, right? I, this has happened to me so many times. You just have to be honest. It just, this is just what happens, right? Can't you stick it out with me a single hour? I have every intention of staying up for midnight prayer. And then 11.45, I've, I've tried to stay up for midnight prayer. And I know that I was awake at 11.50 and 11.55 or 11.59, I'm out cold. I really wanted to to make it, you know, stay up for midnight prayer. My my spirit was willing. And then my flesh just fell asleep, you know. Stay alert, be in prayer so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you're in danger. Now, when I'm reading this in the message translation, what I'm thinking here, what I'm kind of hearing here is stay alert, be in prayer so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you're in danger. This is this can apply to things that we do in the natural. Stay alert to what you're doing, the little things. Stay in prayer so that you don't wander into temptation. Stay in prayer that people can't lull you or pull you or draw you into different types of temptations where you don't even know that you're in danger. Let's apply this to the natural. Good morning right? Stay alert. You're, you have recovered from alcoholism or you're a recovering alcoholic. Now you've gone to a party where the alcohol is flowing. Stay alert. Pray. Get out of there. Do what you have to do so that you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you're in danger or you get invited somewhere and you don't even know what the atmosphere is going to be like. You didn't desire to walk into a place where, where everybody's smoking weed. You didn't know that that was going to be the atmosphere. You got invited to a cookout and you go to the cookout and you get to the cookout and the cookout isn't what you expected, right? Don't wander into temptation. Be alert. Stay in prayer. If that's not the atmosphere and environment for you that you need to be in, leave, right? So it says it's, there's a part of you that is eager. You're ready for anything in God, but there's another part that's as lazy and old as an old dog sleeping by the fire. Now, when I read this, but there's an other, another part that's lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. What This is just my interpretation. This is the way it's hitting me. Sometimes we feel like we can be in the midst of temptation, te temptation and we can overcome it. We're strong enough. I'm fasting, but I, I feel like I can go to the buffet and sit there with my family and not eat. Right? My spirit is is willing. I'm ready for anything. I'm ready to fulfill my fast. But then there's that other part, the foodie in me, the food lover in me, the fleshy part of me, who I might find myself in the midst of temptation and, and break my fast and cave in. So the other thing that I'm thinking is we just have to use wisdom, ask God to order our steps, make sure we pray, pray, pray without ceasing, pray about the decisions we make, pray about the places we go to, pray about the people that we surround ourselves with, right? But in all of this, we want to make sure that we stay prayed up and that um, we're in a place where we don't cave in ever. I don't ever want to even be put into a situation like that. Right. Like Peter, where he ends up denying God and he's getting more and more forceful in his denial to the point where he's now cursing. I don't know him. I don't know him. Right. So this chapter was good. I, re I really, really, really enjoyed this. I pray that everybody enjoyed this. I pray that everybody got something out of it. Right. And um, I just pray that everyone has a, a safe and healthy weekend. Enjoy your day. I pray that our day is blessed from beginning to end and everything that we put forth our hand to do, let it be successful and prosperous. All right. So I'm going to say everybody have a wonderful day, a gr abundant grace and peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining me and we will be back Monday. All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye everyone.